meeting. Do we have a quorum present? We do. We do. Okay, thank you. I'd like to welcome everybody to this meeting of the uh, City University Construction Fund. We have a pretty aggressive agenda today, but we will be able to get through it. Lots of good stuff here that's going on, and we want to get right into it. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is to uh, call the meeting to order, which I've just done, and note that we do have the presence of a quorum uh, here in New York, and also our friends in Albany or on the line. Um, I'd like to ask, first of all, for the approval of the minutes from the March 26th meeting of the fund. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Oh, opposed <laughs> abstention, sorry. <laughs> I will not <laughs> move unless all are moving one way or another. Thank you very much. And then I'd like to go through the first resolution, which is authorizing the execution of a construction contract to construct a new modular child care center at Lehman College. And let me read the resolution first, and then we'll have a discussion after that. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Construction Fund authorizes the Executive Director to execute a construction contract on behalf of Lehman College for all labor, material, and equipment related to the construction of a new modular child care center to access construction for which is the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. Uh, public advertisement was published on December the 7th, and the sealed competitive bid uh, was opened on March 16th, uh, pursuant to our law and guidelines. The, co the total cost of the contract is uh, uh, six million plus a contingency of 922,300,000, and the net cost shall be chargeable to the state capital construction project for an amount not to exceed $7 million. Uh, the contract, of course, shall be subject to approval as to form by the fund's general counsel. Uh, Executive Director, can you just sure. give us a um, little? Currently, the, um, uh, the child care center at Lehman College is operated at the T3 building. The T3 building now needs to be demolished to make room for phase two of Lehman Science. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we need to then relocate the child care center to another facility. Um, I think this board will remember that we brought to you the, uh, the modular project that we did at Bronx Community College for their child care development center, their, their teaching center. Um, and so what we're planning on doing is now constructing a similar modular building um, at Newman College, which will uh, incorporate the child care center. Um, and as I said, if we can't, this is sort of in a critical path to getting T3 demolished so we can start phase two of the, uh, the science project that we need. And I also may add, Mr. Chairman, uh, again, you'll start to see more and more projects that are being managed by CUCF, by CUNY, and this is one of those projects. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Any um, discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? abstentions and carry thank you very much uh, there are the next three action items what I'd like to do if it's okay with the trustees is to try to combine those because they're very similar uh, in content uh, I'll, I'll read them through but they involve a uh, campus of fire alarms and security systems to Brooklyn College uh, to York College and also to Ostos Community College uh, so uh, what I'll do, unless there are any objections to me doing this, is I'll read through the resolutions for these three items, you know, and then we'll have discussion on uh, an explanation of what these three items are, and then we'll vote on it. Is, it, is, there, is that okay in terms of just helping to expedite? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So let me read through the first one, which is the resolution of the... Sorry. And I will, I will shorten my explanation of them. Uh, but first is the resolution for the construction fund authorizing a design of services and equipment installation contract for the design and installation of phase one of the campus-wide fire alarm and security system upgrade at Brooklyn College. And the total cost uh, will not exceed uh, 5.5 million and it will be uh, chargeable uh, accordingly. That's the first uh, resolution. The, the second uh, resolution has to do with the purchase and installation of a fire alarm system and related equipment in the Health and Physical Ed Center at York College. And, and I'll read that through, that we are authorizing the purchase of the services and equipment, design and installation of the fire alarm system at York, uh, which will be chargeable to the general <coughs> services contract, 
uh, for an amount not to exceed uh, 499,000. Um, and the third one, which I'd like to put into this resolution, uh, has to do with the uh, work order uh, for the purchase and installation of a fire alarm wiring system and related work at the 400, uh, 475 Grand Concourse, which is Building A uh, at Ostos uh, Community College. And this, again, will be chargeable to the Office of General Services. It requires uh, the total cost shall not exceed 50%. Uh, it shall not exceed 50,000. And uh, it's 50 percent of it is going to be charged to the city funding source, and another 50 percent will be charged to the state health and safety funding. Because it's community college. It's community. Exactly. So it's always a 50-50 with the community college. So that's the resolution. It hopefully is noted as such in the minutes. And if I can get a second to that. Second. Um, any discussion do you want to? It, it's pretty simple. I mean, uh, in the case of Brooklyn College, as a result of uh, all the work that's going on on the campus, we need to upgrade the, uh, the fire alarm system. Um, in the case of York, it's bringing the building the, and the campus up to code. You need to have a fire alarm system. Um, and again, in the, in the case of Hostos, um, we need to be able to um, put the wiring in so that we can put the new fire alarm system in. Um, in, in all three instances, this is just a code uh, requirement. Um, and I, I might add that uh, this board will see many more of these type of projects uh, come before it because we're doing all of the uh, critical maintenance and the health and safety. Bob, do you want to talk yeah, the, a little bit? The, and the fire department, the codes have changed kind of over the number of years, and the campuses have not been keeping, keeping, up up, with it. Up, keeping up with it. So we are advancing on a regular basis against the state OGS contracts, which allows us to basically buy the design, the installation, and, and the equipment from one vendor, and there's no, no finger pointing. It just makes it much easier for seamless. us to advance it. It's really seamless. Either we'll do it or Dazzy will do it. We'll buy against the state OGS contracts. And there are like four vendors, so we get some competition among those vendors, and we just <coughs> move forward. I think it's very good because for a while we've been talking about trying to get maintenance on all of the colleges and, and this really helps to facilitate that. So just uh, a word of commendation, you know, to the executive director and her staff or team, you know, for bringing this about and bringing all of this to the board. It's, it's really good that this is happening. Um, is there any, or are there any questions and at all? Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of the resolution? Aye. Opposed? abstentions, it carries. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item uh, has to do with the resolution of the fund reviewing and approving internal control guidelines and also the appointing of the internal control officer. Uh, so resolve that the internal control guidelines as attached, which you do have in your attachment one to the resolution are hereby approved and adopted and also resolve that the internal control summary of the fund prepared in accordance with the internal control guidelines as attached to Exhibit 2 is hereby approved and adopted. And also here uh, resolved that the counsel of the fund be and is hereby reappointed as its internal control officer. Uh, is there a uh, second to this particular motion? Okay. Can we have that discussion? Um, I'm going to hand this over to Howard. Yes, um, And I just want to say that he and his staff, as well as um, uh, Rick's staff, um, have done really a wonderful job in terms of uh, putting together these internal controls. And again, as we move forward and CUCF does more of the construction and more of the um, letting of the contracts, uh, these guidelines become really very important to us and the staff here. Can you, Howard, do you want to? Yeah. Um, <coughs> Actually, we're required to to review our procedures annually, um, which, which we do. There's a document that gets sent up to state DOB, and they share that document with the state controller. Uh, it, it's pretty much a, what, what you see attached is a, is a questionnaire, do, and there are statements in the question about um, internal control measures you should have in place, whether you comply, you don't comply, or partially comply. And we, we have completed that. Um, we are uh, we were taking things a little slowly as we come in, and one of our things, one of our, our agenda items for this coming year 
is to improve our internal controls and audit procedures, uh, particularly as we move forward with more work. Um, so uh, I think next year you'll probably see some significant changes in the guidelines as well. And uh, um, so far, you know, we have we have some issues that we have to work on, and we'll be doing that during the year. We have a posting up for a, a financial compliance and internal control person, uh, and I expect we'll start interviewing for that soon. So we we'll make some significant strides in the coming year. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, any discussion or questions at all on um, this uh, particular resolution? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It carries. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item, uh, item number seven, is a resolution approving the annual procurement reports and also procurement guidelines. And so resolved that pursuant to section 2879, of the New York Public Authorities Law and also the guidelines of the construction fund, uh, the annual reports on procurement contracts of the fund for fiscal years uh, 2008, 2009, and also 2010, which are attached to this uh, respectfully, and the guidelines as amended through October 8, uh, 14, 2008, as attached to this B and hereby are approved and adopt it. Uh, well, a as you noted, it's a, a requirement that we report this annually, and you'll see for the attachment we've been very busy um, in terms of the, both the number of contracts and the dollar amount. And uh, is Jeff here? Jeff's not here. Well, I wanted to thank Jeff and his staff. Um, you know, we've put together uh, just a tremendous staff vis-a-vis -vis procurement, and Jeff and his staff has, have really uh, they've pushed a lot of paper out the door, and we've gotten a lot of bids and a lot of work back, um, and uh, they have really done uh, a terrific job for CUCF. Um, and if you go through it, you'll see, you know, just as we talked about before, a lot of issues regarding uh, state of good repair and, and health and safety and fire code. Um, and so, uh, you know, we uh, continue uh, to uh, do this type of work for the campuses. Is there, um, in terms of, uh, you know, minority contracting, that's how, why I how was is that handled? Yeah, that's why I was looking for Jeff. I, I yeah. Where's Jeff? Je uh, Jeff, the director of procurement. No, I said where. Where is he? <laughs> He's probably in his office. But, but you, you know the numbers? Uh, you know, not off the top of my head. Jeff but we can get them for okay. you. Okay. I, I know that we are well within uh, the percentages that we, we need to be within. Okay. Um, but I will get you those numbers uh, yeah. after this. We'll meeting. get you a copy of the report that was. I think that would be good for the trustees to see. Thank yes. you. But by the way, uh, on the same subject, I, I'd just like to let you know that uh, DASNY has been very uh, helpful and aggressive in uh, reaching out to minority law firms. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have participated in a, in effect, a, a job fair, if you will, not a job, but a, 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 a meet and greet and outreach effort by DASNY, as well as more recently by the Corporation Council of the City of New York. And we are uh, about uh, to issue an RFP, is it a P or a RFP, RFP um, for legal work. And, and we have, uh, we will, of course, make extensive outreach efforts to uh, all segments of the legal community, including minority and women-owned firms, uh, with respect to legal representation. If I may, on, on outreach, we do a tremendous amount of outreach. We, we, there are, as you know, there are several organizations around the city and the state that do outreach that we participate in. We. Uh, last October, we, we do one jointly with the rest of the university. Uh, we did one last October, and there will be another one this October. We do that annually. Uh, we have gotten a lot of uh, interest <coughs> and, and participation. Plus, uh, we when we post uh, a procurement, we also make available all of the people who have picked up bid documents or RFPs if it's a design agreement and who they are. And we post that information 
So um, potential subcontractors, which certified MWBs make up a large part of the subcontracting pool, can will know who's interested in our work and be able to reach out to them. Uh, you know, normally, people don't make that information available, but we we do because we think letting people know who's interested in our work gives them the ability to make those connections, mm -hmm. and we and we work to assist them. That's great. One of the things um, I'm sure that the uh, governor's appointee um, to the fund, Noel, you know, would be interested in some of this, and so maybe at the next meeting. Uh, we could just have a report on that whole piece, just so that sure. you know our, uh, the comfort no level of the trustees is further increased. You know, with the proactive efforts that are taking place. Um, so, any other discussion on, on this particular piece? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, resolution, pretty interesting one. Pretty exciting, exciting to read through this one. Um, it has to do with the resolution of the fund authorizing the financing and execution of agreements for the development of the new CUNY Law School. Speaking of law, uh, Rick. And I'll read the resolution and then we'll have some discussion so that everybody's surprised. Uh, whereas the boards of the uh, CUNY Financing Corporation and, the CUNY, uh, and CUNY previously authorized the issuance of CFC on behalf of CUNY one or more series of its revenue bonds, one of which may be federally taxable, build America bonds in an aggregate principal amount, which is presently estimated at approximately 140 million, sufficient to finance the acquisition, renovation, and related costs of a condominium unit at Two Court Square in Long Island City and associated reserve bonds, capitalized interest and cost of issuance of these bonds, and resolved that the board of CUCF hereby authorizes one or more officers included but not limited to the executive director and deputy executive director of CUCF to execute any and all instruments, documents, and agreements as are necessary and desirable in connection with the offering, sale, and issuance of the 2010 bonds. Also, be it further resolved that the Board of CUCF hereby authorizes the CUCF to accept all rights, title, and interest in the project site and convey such to CUCF for no nominal consideration, and an authorized officer is hereby authorized to execute such documents and instruments of conveyance and transfer, and be it resolved that the Board of CUCF hereby authorizes an authorized officer to execute in the name and on behalf of CUCF as tenant a lease with CFC as landlord, be it resolved that the board of CUCF hereby authorizes an authorized officer to provide and to certify the accuracy of any and all information concerning CUCF, its finances and operations as may be required or appropriate for inclusion in any offering document prepared by CFC in connection with the offering, sale, and issuance of the 2010 bonds and the execution and performance by CUCF of its obligations under the lease, and be it further resolved that the Board of CUCF hereby authorizes an authorized officer to execute and deliver such other documents, instruments, agreements as may be necessary convenient or desirable in connection with the transactions contemplated, hereby and by the lease and the 2010 bonds. All of the foregoing agreements shall be approved as to form by the General Council. This is an extremely comprehensive resolution, and I think we'll ask either the Executive Director or our General Counsel to explain it. Sure. Um, th this matter was before the Board in January, and uh, you approved uh, the resolution for the general uh, uh, structure of this transaction whereby uh, CUNY would acquire a condominium interest in a wonderful building in Long Island City for its law school. The CUNY board also has approved that transaction. As we come down to the final uh, uh, point where we're ready to enter into the, contra uh, the uh, 
contracts. A bond council thought it appropriate now that the details have been worked out in terms of the bonds and the lease and the related transactions uh, to pre represent uh, this resolution so that all the details were laid out uh, and, and approval was obtained uh, because they're, we're just about ready to go and, uh, and the bonds hopefully will be issued uh, shortly. So this is really a revisit with somewhat more detail than you saw in January uh, of the same transaction that you've previously approved. This, this is a, just an extremely intricate and, and also it's a, it's a very worthwhile project. Who can we give credit to for the uh, construction of this? It's too many people. Yeah. <laughs> Who do we find? <laughs> no, this is great. This is great. Uh, so, uh, we have the resolution. Can I have a second to the resolution? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion or question about this? This is pretty complicated, but, uh, but essentially based upon the way we read the resolution and the explanation, uh, I, I think this is a win-win for all parties involved, as, as it seems, and it helps us to execute uh, the intent that we originally had in place, uh, even though all of the uh, financial instruments weren't, weren't ready. So, so this is... It's really great. Uh, just uh, so all, all in favor, opposed, abstentions, and again, kudos uh, to all of the people involved. Uh, if you can just, uh, you know, uh, Iris, but if you could just convey to all of the people who were involved in, in this, all of the many hands, uh, you know, many times we don't get all of the good credit for people who are working on this type of thing. I think it's, it's well, in particular, deal. I just want to uh, acknowledge Jennifer Friedman and Don Farley. Is Don here? Um, who yeah. really have really worked their tails off with, through this project. So, And uh, I just want to thank Rick, who's been a, a great partner for us in this yeah. deal. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Jennifer and Don. And of course, Rick, thank you very much. Uh, I think those are uh, all of the main action items. Um, the, uh, the next meeting, you know, just in terms of my report, it will be sometime in September, and uh, we'll get back to you in the usual form you know, regarding that, and also we'll have... Uh, our other trustee who couldn't be, uh, the, the time from his appointment to this meeting was too close for him to rearrange some of his scheduling, but uh, we expect that he'll be here and we shouldn't have any other problems with quorums. Uh, I, I think also, time. Mr. Chairman, I think uh, the speaker is very close to making an appointment as well. You know, when uh, uh, Assemblyman, uh, I think it was Diaz, yes. was elected for our president, um, he left the board. And I believe that for the September meeting, we should have, in addition to Noel Hankin, another um, board member who will be mm -hmm. appointed by the speaker. That's fantastic. And, and then we'll do uh, appropriate transitions as we move along yeah. the way. But uh, yeah, this, is, this is great. Um, I, I think that we have a, a very exciting presentation coming up. And uh, Director Weinstein. Thank you. Uh, the chairman uh, was present uh, a few weeks ago when uh, the chancellor had his business council meeting and uh, I was asked to give a presentation on the physical aspects of a decade of the sciences and we're joined by Jillian Small who's the vice chancellor for research at the university um, and she um, as well gave a presentation at that business council. I guess less on the physical, more on the, uh, the structure and the hiring and the new direction that CUNY is going to take. And at your suggestion, which I think was a good suggestion, we're going to sort of give an abbreviated version of the presentation that, that we made um, at that breakfast. So, um, what? Oh, okay. Okay. You're not very technologically. Uh, I th <laughs> she's I don't know how she's a that. mere biochemist. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure the people in Albany can see it too. <laughs> How's the weather up there? It, it's actually pretty nice. Can't complain up here. It's up from three to four in the morning. Yeah, yeah, it's up early too. I pulled my back out. We can't see the presentation. Have you guys had the presentation? We, we, we haven't. We haven't out. put it oh, on. Yeah, we're, we're waiting. We're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> we we need a technologically competent person. <laughs> okay. We all have these fancy computers. Right. 
By the way, this is the only guy who knows how to operate that, that thing, but he oh, really? can never leave Q. Oh, boy. <laughs> he can't get sick either. <laughs> no. We do our schedule, the meetings around his schedule. Right. Okay. So we're good there. Can you see something Can now? Can you see it now? He's reading his phone. Denard? Yeah, we see it. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> So, um, uh, you can just. So, uh, in in 2005, um, the chancellor deemed that this would be the decade of the sciences for CUNY, um, and uh, really his charge was very simple: that we would renew sciences at all levels. I'm, I'm sorry, just excuse me. The, I noticed the microphone is off on the other side. Is is that intentional? That's because he's not talking. Yeah, yeah he muted it. Oh, he, he muted it. Oh, okay, good. Because I just wanted to be sure that we didn't do it from here. Right. So, okay. I'm so, so sorry. It's okay. So it was to advance, really, sciences at all the highest levels here at CUNY. Um, so also train students who would be able to teach science. But most important, it was to encourage young people, and particularly women and minorities, uh, to study in, in these disciplines. Um, the next slide uh, will really show you the breadth and the depth of, of what we're going through here at CUNY, which is enormous in terms of the physical space of the university. If you total up all the, gra the gross square footage, under construction or renovation now, it's almost 2 million square feet of space. It's 1.832 million square feet of space uh, for a project cost of almost $2.4 billion. Um, what city is that the size of? It's, it's, <laughs> it's huge. That's all <laughs> it's I think. Um, and um, this program is enabling us not only to build new buildings, but as I noted before, to renovate existing buildings and bring them up to the 21st century. Um, I'm just going to go through a, a few of the projects that either have been completed in the last few months or are still in construction. Uh, first and foremost was the addition that we put on Remsen Hall at Queens College. Um, this is a new 26,000 square foot addition to what was the original Remsen Hall, which was a 1950s style building. Um, by building this addition now, we're going to be able to go back into old Remsen Hall and renovate those labs um, so that the, the faculty and the researchers will move into the new portion, will renovate old Remsen Hall, and this will increase the amount of space that, that we have available. And I might note, Mr. Chairman, that this building opened up in the fall, and it is terrific to go on this campus now, walk in this building, and seeing students have instruction in 21st century labs uh, oh. at the new edition of Remsen oh. Hall. Oh. They didn't have that when I was there. <laughs> 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 Although I'm, I'm proud of this entire initiative, really the aspect that I'm the most proud of um, is the uh, initiative that we have going in terms of upgrading individual labs on campuses. As you'll remember, last year we came in and we said that we had done five labs across various campuses um, uh, in terms of instructional labs and working with uh, Jillian, we were able to identify uh, a number of research labs that we were able to upgrade. One in particular at Steinman Hall in City College, which I think is an environmental, which is it's fabulous is the only way to describe it, uh, as well as we did a, a lab at Marshack, we combined two labs. Um, so. Having had success, we're now moving forward, and we've bitten off more of the apple here. Um, we're now working on upgrading 12 instructional labs and five research labs uh, across the campuses, and I might note that it's our goal to complete these labs within 14 months. And this board will remember that uh, you approved a number of, of requirements contracts, which is enabling us to move very quickly in terms of getting both the design and the construction done uh, of, of these projects. And you'll just see the picture there. Um, I don't know, is that Marshack or is it? Brooklyn. 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 To the left is before, and then you look at the after. It's like going from uh, Dr. Frankenstein's uh, <laughs> a lab over to what should be a, a modern instructional yeah, right, lab. It's a Star Wars. Um, and I really, I've got to uh, thank both uh, Bob Lemieux and David Salmon, who have really taken the initiative uh, and worked on this. Um, the next project is, is Medgar Evers, um, and uh, this building uh, was really envisioned in the 1995 master plan uh, for the college. 
This building will open in August. Um, it is a phenomenal uh, uh, building, and it will have 27 research labs uh, in the facility, um, as well as numerous instructional labs. Do you remember how many instructional labs? 12. 12, 12 or 14 instructional labs. And I have to say, Mr. Chairman, I was out there a couple of weeks ago, and um, uh, they're just doing some punch list items, and the building will be opened in August. No kidding. It's uh, it's 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 quite something. And From the time when we last visited there, <laughs> it's 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 night and day. Um, they were actually when we were out there. They were putting the seats in for uh, uh, the um, uh, the auditorium, which is named after Dr. Jackson, um, and it's a state of the art auditorium uh, and lecture hall. And the and the science laboratories, the instructional science laboratories, are the most advanced I think in the CUNY system. They are really spectacular labs. Um, the next project is uh, our John Jay project. This is a 620,000 square foot building, which you can look out the window of many of our offices and see the curtain wall is now almost up, so the building is almost completely enclosed. Bob, can we still we can still get a good view from your office? Well, the city, can we still see the city? We can still see the city. I can see, and I can, with the reflection, I can now see south on <laughs> south as well as north. <laughs> But there are three floors of instructional and research uh, uh, labs uh, in this building, and um, uh, it's uh, it's really quite something to see the great expanse of this building. So, I mean, I remember when we looked at the plans, and and so every I drive by here all of the time, and I mean it's just incredible the, the work that's done there. And it's very, it's it's a very nice looking building. I mean, it's very. It attracts your eye as you're driving. It's a very, very attractive yeah. building. So. You almost have to be in one of the office buildings to see here down, yeah. to really see down. You really appreciate it because by looking from the streets, you still don't realize and how massive. I, I think it. also it's very exciting, and and uh, we're all very thrilled about. It. It's going to be the commons and the the green roof that we're putting. It will finally give a little bit of a campus feel to John Jay, which is a very urban campus and, as we know, is spread around a number of buildings in this neighborhood. Uh, the next project is a project that we hope to get done uh, very soon. It's the new academic clipboard building for uh, New York City Tech. This is going to be their new state-of-the-art science building. Um, as everybody knows, there are a number of majors at New York City Tech um, in both dental hygiene, optical, um, all these new nursing, all these new um, labs will be in this new building, uh, which is a 350,000 row square foot building um, on the corner of Tillery and J Street. The building is completely designed now. We have designated a CM for this project, and what we're beginning to do is to um, really do uh, the calculation on whether the costs jive with what we've designed here, um, and. We're short about 150 million in appropriations. We recognize that this is not a good year in terms of uh, the legislature funding additional projects. So um, we're just going to have to uh, keep our fingers crossed and hope that next year we're able to get the money. But mm -hmm. we still are working on the project and and working with the architect. It would seem that <coughs> we could make the type of connections where we could try to get some appropriations because we have very strong connections with a lot of the political legislators and assemblymen who are attached to New York City Tech. And they are yeah. very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, we've had numerous conversations with Senator Adams and Assemblymember mm -hmm. Millman, um, whose district this resides in. We just need to have the proper economic time to sort of. Uh, this is, if you look at the green sheet that we've been lobbying on up in Albany, this is the highest priority uh, of, of the university. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next project is also a project where we have just hired the architect to design the new Roosevelt Hall, which will be a two-phase project. It's going to be um, 100,000 square feet of, no, 180,000 square feet of instructional space and then 100,000 square feet of research labs um, at Brooklyn College. The architecture firm we hired was, was Mitchell Jurgula. And I might say, Mr. Chairman, um, a few of us went to see the latest uh, Mitchell Jurgula building, which is at Rockefeller University, where uh, Vice Chancellor Small worked. Um, it's a spectacular infill building uh, that they put up there, which is connecting uh, the two um, research uh, buildings. And if they do half as well by CUNY, I think we will really benefit from a very useful and spectacular uh, science building. 
Um, and, it, and it will fit with the motif and the, with the. It, it will, but um, I think what we're beginning to see now, because we have the West Quad building at the West mm. Campus, which is a little bit more modern, mm. uh, that we can push the envelope a little bit. Mm. And because Bedford Avenue sort of divides the campus, we can have a more traditional part of the campus oh. and maybe a little Wait, bit more modern. And, and this has got a transition between the very Georgian yes. to what's on the West Side. Okay. Okay. So. Well, but one thing's for sure, we will put the cornerstone back in that President Roosevelt uh, laid about, yeah. into this yeah. building. We will not lose <laughs> that, uh, that aspect. Yeah. Um, we talked about the second phase of Lehman. We're now in construction in the first phase of this um, 67,000 square foot um, uh, earth science uh, research building. And uh, you know this was designed by Perkins and Will. And uh, we're making progress out there. Uh, we had a delay in the project by about three or four months. Um, we're sort of working now with both the contractor and DASNY to move this project along. Uh, but this will be the most environmentally correct building in all of CUNY. Um, LEED Gold. LEED Gold certified. Um, it's it's going to be using gray water, and it's going to use the gray water to, to service all of the, the uh, uh, the, the plants and the shrubs, it's going to be quite a, uh, a lovely addition, both to the campus uh, and to CUNY. Um, our jewel in the crown, our, our um, almost 400,000 square foot uh, uh, science complex up at City College, both ASRC and CCNY, uh, the steel is going up, um, and uh, we're going to start to put up the curtain wall, we hope, uh, on schedule. Um, and as you drive um, up toward the City College campus, these two buildings have now changed the whole um, sort of focus and design and, and your direction on the campus. Um, you actually, your eye really catches these two buildings uh, as they're going up. And I know Jillian's going to talk a little bit more <coughs> at length about uh, the ASRC. I don't know, do we have the video on this? I don't have the There was a no. video from both. No, there's no video? No. Okay. Oh, I wasn't talking about any video. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I won't show the video. Right, we can set it up if you like. Yeah, that's okay. Can you put it Something says ASRC video. Yeah, but that's just a slide. So let's, anyway, so that's my presentation. There's a lot going on, and I have to say that, um, you know, everybody at this table, um, uh, from Gwen and Howie, who have really worked to get the budget numbers going, um, as, as well as all of Bob's staff have done just a tremendous job. This, this is great work. Um, and you, you, you and all of your staff are to be commended for, for I mean, this, this is just nothing short of fantastic. And, and I think uh, I was really glad that uh, I was, you have the video almost ready? Not the video, this is the next presentation. Oh, okay. do, you, do you want to see the video? Well, oh, Can you get it up? Uh, I, don't, I don't have the video. It's oh, it's sure. got the stick the there, right? Oh, it's, it's on, on the, the web? Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. We'll do it another time. It's not on the stick? <coughs> is, it, is it on let's the stick? Let's just go to Jill. Yes. We can no, show we're, the, we're the video another time. time. And I, I'm just stepping up. Okay, thank you. Well, before Iris uh, leaves the room, I have to say that we really thank uh, Iris and her staff for the fabulous work that she's doing in renovating these science buildings because really, both for our students and for our faculty, it's very difficult to expect them to do top-rate science in the in the sort of uh, uh, lab that you saw in the before picture there that, um, that Iris has shown, and they're, and they're really doing um, a fabulous job. And, and we really feel like, you know, Chancellor has designated this the decade of science, and we're trying to encourage more of our students to go into the science and STEM disciplines. And for our students to do research and to understand these disciplines, they really have to be exposed to faculty who are doing first grade research as well. So our goal is to, to attract and retain the faculty that are really doing top rate research and to, um, and on all of these faculty, have students at pretty much all levels working in their labs with them, from um, actually even from high school students, undergraduate students, uh, master students, doctoral students, and then postdoctoral fellows, uh, all make up the teams in almost all of the labs that I'm going to talk about. But it was clear, given where we were in the sciences uh, a few years ago, that we couldn't uh, try to be the best um, in every discipline at every campus. So we, we, we made a decision to, to be selective, to look at areas where we had um, current strengths and that we felt we could build upon those strengths and areas that would be 
um, relevant moving forward five, 10, 15 years from now. So we designated these areas as flagship areas. Um, and you can see some of them here, photonics, nanotechnology, neuroscience, structural biology, environmental sciences. They're really areas, uh, especially the energy, uh, really areas that we felt would be very relevant moving forward. We decided to hire faculty specifically into these areas for their research capabilities, and of course they also uh, teach in all of our campuses. And I, I just want to give you a couple of highlights of some of the faculty from, from the junior faculty. I'll give you an example here, Hiroshi Matsui, we hired a, uh, into the uh, Photonics Initiative at Hunter College. He came in as a junior faculty assistant professor and has just excelled in his research. He's now been uh, um, quoted in, and, and uh, he making headline news in some of the uh, eminent journals and has brought in you know, over $2.5 million in research funding to, to support his research. And again, uh, uh, female engineer, which is always good, Ilona uh, Kretschmer, we brought in uh, a junior faculty again into, into the chemical engineering department. She immediately started getting uh, very significant grants. She was the recipient, recipient of the NSF Career Award, which is the most prestigious award that NSF uh, award for junior faculty to uh, launch their research careers. And again, has brought in over one and a half million dollars already in external funding. But we also need to bring in some mid-career or more advanced uh, research faculty who can be role models for the junior faculty that we're hiring and, um, and mentors to them. So uh, we attracted uh, Sandra Banerjee as a distinguished professor to come and head up our Energy Institute. We, we attracted him from UC Santa Barbara, their last our game. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he's just done some terrific work in the less than two years he's been here. Uh, already he's secured over four and a half million dollars uh, in, in funding for, uh, for his work. And it's also because when you bring in somebody like that, other people want to come work with them. So the Energy Institute itself um, has, has already attracted over six and, uh, almost six and a half million dollars for, for that funding. And, and you know, Sandroy has been named as, as committee members on many of the committees for the, the battery um, uh, in, uh, 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 initiative at, uh, in New York State. And, and we're, we're um, uh, is collaborating with people across the country. So it, it really makes a mark when you can attract somebody at that level. And Iris uh, talked about the ASRC. The goal is to uh, recruit directors in each of the five areas of the ASRC, which I'll uh, mention in a minute. Uh, we have one director already who's a target of opportunity, who is an expert in water and environmental sciences, Charlie Boris Marty. And the same thing, he's attracting other faculty to come and work with them. He's attracting a lot of money and research funding already. And he'll be the first director that will move into the ASRC when it's ready. So just to highlight the fact that these, uh, these efforts are really paying off and it's worth Iris continuing to build these buildings. Um, uh, in 2000, we were, we were uh, attracting less than $50 million, you know, uh, being awarded less than $50 million in, in research awards across the system. This is not total funding. This doesn't include training grants or anything. This is pure research grants. And we don't have the exact numbers, so the scale is a little up at the bottom because 2010 is just finishing. It, it ends you know, June 30th. But um, we're projecting to have tripled that amount um, of research funding. Uh, and, and we'll be in the area of 140 to 150 million this year. So it, it's really, uh, the efforts are really paying off. You can see some of those increases at some of the top research campuses, City College, Hunter College, and Queens College in that inset at the top. And um, you can see how they're steadily increasing their research funding. And this, I should point out, in a time when federal agencies um, are giving out less money and very, very competitive. So I think to do this in this climate is really a tribute to the faculty that we're bringing in. Um, it's also very important, science uh, 20 years ago, or whenever it was that I started, was a very much a, a, an insular thing. You've got your own research grant, you worked in your lab, and you are carried on. Now it's much more uh, collaborative you, you, to survive and to really attract large funding. You have to collaborate. And uh, we're really leading uh, efforts in collaboration with other institutions um, and with uh, industry. I, I, I list a couple of them here where we're really forming collaborative um, uh, groups between other Clarkson University, which is a nice upstate, downstate uh, collaboration we have in New York, but also Carolina and other um, uh, institutions and also bringing in industry to the table so that industry is, is both helping to see some of the research and working with us. And uh, Brookhaven National Labs is um, a very nice opportunity for us to, to collaborate and have access to some of their high-end facilities and we recently signed 
uh, a memorandum of understanding with Brookhaven. I signed together with the director of Sam Aronson, the director of Brookhaven, to encourage not only our faculty to collaborate with their uh, their staff and, and do research, but also for our students to go and spend time at Brookhaven National Labs and, and do summer internships there. And that's going very nicely. Um, we're also very aware that universities of the 21st century must be uh, a focus of, of helping to stimulate uh, economic development. And um, so we're, we're increasing our efforts to help faculty work, both, both work with industry and also create their own spin up companies that will stay local, stay in the state, um, attract uh, the SBIRs, a small business innovation research grants that many of the federal agencies have now. They award the grants to the company, but then the company can buy some of the money back to the university to do the research. And, and uh, several of our junior faculty are now working with us, starting companies, staying local, and um, uh, spinning off their research in that way. We are taking greater efforts to uh, license the IP of our faculty. I just again mention a couple of the uh, interesting projects that are very relevant at this time. Uh, faculty member at City College, George John, has uh, developed a, a new model, model way, uh, novel way of uh, uh, recouping oil from water, which is very relevant mm. as you think about that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. And this That's is a non-toxic mechanism. It's sugar-based. And NSF just, had, just put out a, a call for rapid responses to any... What's the name um, of the professor? His name is George John, the uh, faculty member of the City College in the uh, chemistry department. Oh, and uh, he applied for all these rapid response grants from NSF and he thinks he's going to get it to sort of really spur this, this research forward to, to be able to address some of the issues that we have in the Gulf now. So rel very relevant research that we're trying to uh, move forward quickly and, and, um, and license. And, and Maren Bixon, another faculty member, has a heat reduction method for medical implants. One of the problems with medical implants is that they heat up the local area when they're implanted and he's, we're working to um, to uh, license that technology. Mm -hmm. Before, and, and we can talk about this as a sidebar. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that we ought to, there's no reason why George John should not be on CNN talking about some of this. And um, there, there are a number of uh, projects that individuals are involved in where they're really getting the visibility. We, we need to talk about that maybe offline, how we can increase our, our visibility in, in this area to really get on the map. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I'm just talking about getting on the map. I highlight one of our faculty members who was highlighted in National Geographic this month. Mm -hmm. um, he's working on uh, snow melt in Greenland, and there's a feature article in National Geographic uh, uh, this June 2010 issue. So uh, we do we do work to do this, but any any ideas to do more of that? Yeah, yeah, no, I, have some I, I met him at one of those uh, salute to scholar receptions. He's, he's a terrific guy. Iris mentioned the Advanced Science Research Center. This will really dramatically change our research endeavors in the areas that we're uh, supporting in this building because there's no way, even with all the building that, that uh, is being done, that we can put the state of the art, highest end research facilities on all of our campuses. So to put them in one place in the ASRC and have our faculty come and use them uh, is, is terrific. Uh, I'll just give a couple of highlights. There is a state of the art clean room for nanofabrication being designed in this building. That It'll be the, the largest one in the city, right? It'll be the most sophisticated one in the city, for sure. At the moment, faculty travel to Brookhaven National Labs, or they travel up to Cornell. <laughs> so we're not only talking to our faculty, but yeah. faculty in the other areas, Cornell, uh, Columbia, and, and NYU are talking to us about using this facility. And it will really enable our faculty to um, produce sensors, circuits, fabrication circuits, actually on, on site. Uh, it'll be a fabulous addition. Uh, we're putting a rooftop observatory for remote sensing so that uh, we can increase our um, atmospheric imaging and um, um, health, uh, environmental health research. And again, uh, very sophisticated and, and because it's growing so tall, it will really advantage our researchers. So I talked about a lot in a very short time, but just to summarize, I, I think by focusing on key emerging areas, by hiring junior faculty with outstanding potential and a few high-profile senior researchers who can really help stimulate our goals, and then foster inter-institutional collaborations <coughs> and encourage spin-offs and uh, technology commercialization and spur uh, economic development. Uh, you can see the results are already paying off. We have a 3% increase in research awards in this decade, and we expect that to just continue. This is great. This is excellent. Thank you so much, Joey, for the presentation. And 
I mean, what I think the reason why I, I wanted the uh, vice chancellor to, to make this presentation is because sometimes we're, I mean, we don't always see the forest for the trees. We're so involved in, in our little piece of the world, and we don't see the impact that it has from a larger strategic standpoint. And this enables us to see that. And, and also, it, it gives us a new vision for what we need to do differently in terms of continuing to make sure that we have the buildings in place to support the other aspects of the plans that we have for the decade of the sciences. It's all about that. So really, it really comes together in a very good way. And, and, and in fact, this just stimulated a whole bunch of other thoughts, which I'll carry to the, uh, to the CUNY board you know, around how we can continue to leverage, get, get some leverage out of this. This is something that everybody should really know about. And I, I imagine that yeah, the, the one thing that comes to my mind is that if we are building these state-of-the-art facilities, then we have to make sure that we have the curriculum and the support and all of the other plans are in place in order to realize you know, the, the potential that, that we have. If we don't have that, then it's just an empty building. So we have to make sure that on the other side that, that we really have all of the other supports in place. And, and the physical and mental energy to, to drive the type of programs and to get the collaborations and get the grants that we need to carry things. Can you just respond to that? I mean, you know, we're, we're entering an economic uh, period where we're a bit worried about where we're going to be, but I think it's imperative that maybe things slow a little, but we can't stop this because we would, you know, we've moved so far, but it's still a little fragile. We, we can't uh, lose this opportunity. One thing that I think about is losing some of the stars that we have and that we're nurturing at CUNY at a time where, you know, maybe the economic climate is not so great in New York State, some of the private institutions that lost some of their endowment, but it's now coming back, will be just ready to pick off our faculty, you know? Mm -hmm. And we have to make a uh, retention office to those faculty and make sure that we can do that. We just put an offer together. Somebody was offered a $2 million startup to move away from CUNY and go to, to uh, at the University of Texas. And we put together a retention mm -hmm. offer and we kept it. We have to do that. It's imperative. Yeah, Otherwise, we're going to lose this talent that we nurture. Yeah, I lost my daughter to the University of Texas for CUNY because of that. <laughs> but she's working on her PhD. Yeah, exactly. It was a hard battle. <laughs> it was a hard battle. I, I wanted her to go to the graduate center, but uh, but, it's, but they're formidable, and we have to continue to, uh, to make those type of efforts. So I, I think what's good about it is that by showing individuals the type of building construction plans that we have, I mean, to me, that's all part of their the retention effort. Sure, sure. You know, oh, it's not absolutely. just money. If we had to tell them that, I'm sorry, this is what you've got for the next 20 years, you know, they're, they're going to come. Yeah, exactly. Dr. Maxwell just said it. She said it's solid. You see it. You know it's there. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, at City College, they're getting a little impatient, but then now they see it rising from the ground. So, exactly. when, you know, on a bad day, they can just look out the windows and say, that's where we're going to go, That's you know, right. and it makes a difference. Exactly. It really does. The gift of the president. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, I just met with this morning. I'm right. very excited exactly. about that project. <coughs> thank you very much. Are there other items that you have to report? No. Very good. Thank you so much. I don't know if my that. colleague. I'll, I'll be very brief. I, I guess Please. it would be good to, to, to get a little status on, on Fitterman Hall. So if you remember in November, we demolished Fitterman Hall. We started construction in December. <laughs> so to date, we've installed all the caissons. have been completed. All the caps have been completed. Now we've started on the uh, grade slab. So we should start steel erection by the end of next month, and that should go through. So maybe we'll have topping out this winter on the steel. So it's progressing very well. It's actually on or a little ahead of schedule at this point. So it's a project that we're showing right now. 2012. You know what would be good if uh, Bob, could you have somebody just maybe draw out what I call a perk chart or something? You know, perk is my old language. Yeah, okay. Uh, critical path. <laughs> Just uh, you know when each uh, construction project is supposed to be finished, yeah, so that okay. we could see we it. That, that, yeah. that would be yeah. good to see, yeah. but th because we have so many things going on, and it would be good to be up to date on exactly when things are supposed to be completed. And the other thing that I, I was at the uh, Roosevelt um, house the, the other day, and uh, and it's really beautiful, but. Did we have a ribbon cutting or anything there? Or I think I she's it? planning on doing it in the fall. Uh, that's when the Ask Institute gets into full gear. Um, uh, and you're absolutely right. It's a, just a beautiful renovation. And I think uh, Polshak, who is the architect, did a spectacular job there. The same architect that just made forever. And the same architect that City mm -hmm. College has mm -hmm. selected now to do 
the Colin yeah. Powell Center at uh, City College. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we could uh, just uh, implore the, the presidents to let us know when they're going to do ribbon cutting, so that way the trustees <laughs> yeah. and other people. Can Usually, it happens that way, not always. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah, no, I know, but just so that they sure, um, have us involved, uh, so that way we can participate in, in the ceremony. Uh, you know, and the joy of all of the work that everybody around this table has been involved in, and I think it's important. So. Right. Um, any other items? Uh, yes. At Roosevelt House? Yeah. <laughs> we, met, we couldn't because we need to be able to video conference with Albany, and we weren't able to do that at the site. So that's why we had to cancel it. You sure you can't do it there? Yeah, I, it like it's, it's, a it's a little it's difficult. A little tricky, but we're, we're still working on we're trying working to make We're working on trying happen. to get it set up. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we can set up a, a meeting or something. Dr. Maxwell will see the visitors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, great. it's a great site. And it, when you drive by, there's always something going on there. Hunter has it scheduled now constantly. Yeah, I was there when the Dalai Lama were you there? I was, I was away. That was it's fantastic. Uh, and being there. He really enjoyed uh, being in the facility. I think he was going down the stairs. It's probably one of the nicest that I've seen. It really before. is. Oh, it's great. So, uh, Micah, is any? That's not a thing. Any other items for the agenda for the good of the order? If not, then uh, I'd like to wish everybody a joyous and uh, happy uh, summer. Um, try to stay cool and all of the seat, find somewhere to be with your family and friends, and we'll be gearing right back up in, in the fall. Uh, well, well, we'll be here anyway, <laughs> but as a group, we'll get together then. And if I could have a motion to, uh, to adjourn, mm -hmm. uh, all in favor, opposed abstentions. Albany, enjoy. Denar. Thank you. See you the next time I'm up there, okay? Of course, of course. Look forward to it. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much.